Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Ancelone. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. This morning, it's all about childhood and teenage years. It's about how spiritism can empower the first years of everyone's lives. And why is that so important? As Ellen Kardec said in the Spirit's book, we need to be fully aware that childhood is something that is very, very important. In 1857, the illuminated minds, way before science fully understood about the importance of childhood, Kardec, in his amazing questions to the spirits, got answers that were revolutionary and actually very much at the vanguard of humanity's progress. Because in questions 382 and 383, we're going to find that childhood is a necessity. A spirit incarnates in order to perfect itself. Thus, during childhood, it is more accessible to the impressions it receives and which may assist in its progress. Persons in charge of education should contribute towards this goal. This was 1857. Um, Science at the time did not understand about the importance of childhood as we now understand it. And nowadays with the development of psychology and also neuroscience, we understand why. Because the nervous system is so plastic, it's so open for changes and transformations that all we need is to expose our children to concepts, to ideas and experiences so they form a whole pathway in their nervous system, allowing them to go through the process. So this is very important to us. I personally, as a neuroscientist, have researched a lot on neonatal, neonatal life, and we've published a lot of papers with the University of Maryland in which we observed that whatever happens in childhood will be setting up, wiring the brain later in life. This is something that confirms science way, way, way after what the spirits reveal to us. And why we're emphasizing this? Because this book, the spirit book, is a true, a true constitution for our souls. If we read it, there are revelations here that have been already proved by science and will be proved by science showing to us what Kardec showed in the Genesis, that spiritism and science are aligned, are together. And when we align them both, we progress faster. So we cannot fall in the traps of fundamentalist mindset or skepticism. In that regard, spiritism is just what we need. It's about the necessity of studying to edify the mind and loving our neighbors to perfect our sentiments. These very words are from the assistant Silas in the book Action and Reaction, which, by the way, is being studied at the Spiritist Society of Virginia. If you wanna, if you're in the area, and wanna know more, just go to our website www.ssvirginia.org and join us in. A journey of inner discovery and a lot of empowerment. Right now, a set of news for all of us who are around the world and want to know more about the Spiritist Movement. Yes, this is a set of news for all those who want to know more what's going on around the world in regard of Spiritism. We now have the opportunity of offering again the printing of the Spiritist magazine. All you need to do is go to our website, spiritismagazine.com or www.thespiritismagazine.com and order your magazine directly through our partnership with hpmagcloud.com. Also, you can read the Spiritist magazine online through the digital form, which is free 
of any charge, and you can read it through your iPhone, iPad, any tablet, uh, any computer at any time. Just go to our website, spiritismagazine.com, and you will access all the issues in digital form. Fascinating. Also, we want to tell you that there is a sister radio with their online web radio directly from Miami, Florida. All you need to do to access this is go to spiritist.com. They have programs in English, in Spanish, and in Portuguese. Also, as we are interviewing today, Bernadette Leal. Bernadette Leal will be soon in Danbury, Connecticut for a special workshop for children, for educators of children and youth, how they actually empower themselves into a pathway of enlightenment for their children. Bernadette Liao is going to tell us more about the event. It's going to happen on September 8th and September 9th in a, in a week from today. Well, right now we want to share with you that our dear friend James Moroda from Minas Gerais, from Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais, is kindly providing us new spiritist songs in English. He recently uh, wrote a song named Heavenly. And as he said, he inspired himself in the words of Emmanuel. When Emmanuel talked about, you know, the need of us connecting with the higher mind and the feeling, the heavenly feeling, feeling that it brings to us. So right now, we're going to stream to you the beautiful song that he put together and shares with us here at Kardec Radio.
Dear listener, we are here in a special show dedicated to spirituality for kids and youth. It's about how to teach spiritism to children and youth. And spiritism is a science, a science that studies the origin, the destiny, and the nature of spirits in their interaction with the corporeal world. We're all spirits living an incarnate life, but when we are not incarnated, we're still living because life really goes on. By the way, the movie and Life Goes On is from the book and Life Goes On by the spirit Andrea Luis through the loving hands of Chico Xavier is coming about uh, in the major screens of the movie theaters in Brazil September 14th. And we're really looking forward to that in the United States of America as well, aren't you? We are. Well, because life goes on, this life as an incarnation is a passing moment, but very important. Because as we are here, we're sowing seeds for our immortality. It's not only about one life and next life. Some people think, oh, well, I'm doing this because in the next life, you never know. Maybe what we're doing today is going to affect us in 10 lifetimes from now. You never know. We don't know. Only God knows. All we know is that what we're doing are true seeds for the future. And that's why childhood is so vital and important. We want to know more as we're going to talk to Bernadette Liao. She has a bachelor's degree in art, a master's in education, and is currently a board member of the Spiritist Society of San Diego and the coordinator of the, yes, Youth Spiritist Education, which is a subdivision of the United States Spiritist Council, developing a children's spiritist lesson plan book, which, by the way, is being used in several spiritist centers, including the Spiritist Society of Baltimore and the Spiritist Society of Virginia. Since 2009, she has been in charge of the youth program at the U.S. Spiritist Symposia. She is also a regular contributor to Cardiac Radio with the Yes segment, answering questions to parents and educators on how to bring spiritual awareness and spiritist teachings to their children. She has been supporting the youth program of the Spiritist Centers in the U.S. through workshops, lectures on education. Bernadette has also a passion for music and is a singer and songwriter performing and speaking at local churches and centers. She will be here with us very, very soon directly from California. And in the meantime, we want to stream to you another collaborator of ours, Dr. Narvin Ditti. She has been contributing with us, especially with immigrants who are in the United States or want to be, so they empower themselves succeeding in America. Every show she has short segments, but very empowering, telling us, giving us tips and hints on how to succeed in America. Today, she's going to teach us on how to start a business conversation. Let us listen to this now. <music> Hi, this is Nara Vindidi with Succeed in America by Packaging Your Brilliance, helping immigrants and foreign-born professionals succeed in the workplace. Our topic today is how to start a conversation when networking. Imagine you are at a party or reception. What do you say to start a conversation? How do you approach people you do not know? What questions are appropriate to ask? What topics are appropriate to discuss? How do you work the room? In the U.S., start a conversation with a general, non-business-related comment. This is called small talk. Small talk is a warm-up or prelude to that part of the conversation in which you will seek answers to your questions, be it job search-related or any business or personal questions. The aim of small talk is to connect with people, make them comfortable, and to like you. Now, remember here that appropriate and inappropriate topics vary across cultures. In the United States, avoid discussing another person's income or financial situation, religion, politics, or any controversial topics. 
Do not go into deep discussion of a topic, but change topics often to maintain superficial and light conversation. Now, good topics to discuss are weekend and vacation plans, theater and movie shows, the weather, work, cars, pets, and sports. This is Nara Venditti with Succeed in America by Packaging Your Brilliance, helping immigrant and foreign-born professionals succeed in the workplace. If you have any questions, please email me at nara at succeedinamerica.com. That is N-A-R-A at S-U-C-C-E-E-D in America.com. And thank you for listening. Dear listener, as you are here at Kardec Radio, some people have been asking us, how can they talk to us live? You can always talk to us live as long as the show is happening on Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can call us at 858-769-4705. Talk to our guests. Talk to us, the host. Make your questions, comments, selections. By the way, we want to thank everyone who has been sending Good suggestions, supporting, encouraging words through our email, cardacradio at gmail.com or directly at our website, the contact form, cardacradio.com. And it's very appreciative. And, you know, there's so many people who have been contacting Cardac Radio because they want to be in the show, sharing the, the news on their books, even though they're not spiritists, but they enjoy very much getting to know about Cardac because they never heard of a radio named Kardec, and they want to know more about who Kardec is. This is quite interesting. If you're there and you want to participate, you can send us an email, kardecradio at gmail.com or kardec at kardecradio.com. And we will certainly consider it. For the time being, we told you previously that Bernadette Liao is a singer and also a songwriter. And she has a beautiful CD she put together. Before she comes here, because she'll be here in a few minutes, she has shared with us beautiful songs she put together. One of them you're going to listen to now is named A Light Shine Through. Let us listen to this. Soon Bernadette Liao will be here with us.
Bernadette Liao in her CD. She's going to tell us more about it as she is also not only an educator, but a singer and a songwriter. We are here dedicating the whole program to understanding on how we can teach about spiritism to children and youth. Because as we got to know in Alan Kardec's books, childhood is a necessity. This is answer to question 382 of the Spirits book. It is not only a necessity, but during childhood, it is more accessible to the impressions it receives, which may assist it in its progress. Not only that, but as they explain, also the reason why teenagers change so much when they become teenagers. This is question and answer 385. As we're going to talk about the spiritism for teens, uh, we want to know, as Kardec asked, why do they change so much when they are in adolescence? And the spirits revealed to us. It is because the spirit recaptures its true nature and reveals who it really was prior to its present incarnation. You do not know the secrets that children conceal behind their innocence. You do not know what they are, what they have been, or what they will be. Nevertheless, you love us and cherish them as though they were part of you. This happens to such a degree that the love of a mother for her child is reputed to be the greatest love that one being may have for another. Why do even strangers feel sweet affection and display tender benevolence toward a child? Do you know? No? Well, I will explain to you. Children are beings whom God has sent into a new existence. So that God is not accused of excessive severity, God gives them all the appearances of innocence, even in children of an evil nature. Their misdeeds are covered up because they are unaware of the quality of their acts. However, this innocence does not truly reflect their state of advancement in relation to what they previously were. In reality, it is a picture of what they were ought to be, and if they are not, the blame falls on them alone. Nevertheless, it is not merely for the children's sake that God gives them such an appearance. It is also and especially for their parents, whose love is necessary in their fragility. Such love would be extraordinarily weakened if the parents were faced with a quarrelsome and bad-tempered character. On the other hand, supposing their children to be good and gentle, parents give them all their affection and surround them with the tenderest love and care. However, when children no longer need the protection and assistance that has been given to them for 15 or 20 years, their true and individual character emerges in all its nakedness. Their character remains good if it was fundamentally good in the first place, but it will always display nuances that were hidden during early childhood. You can see that God's ways are always the best, and that when one has a pure heart, they are easily explained. In fact, ponder the possibility that the spirit of the child who is born among you may have come from a world on which it has acquired altogether different habits. How would you want this new being to remain in your midst with passions so diverse from yours, inclinations and also tastes entirely opposite to yours? Childhood provides yet another purpose. Spirits only enter corporeal life in order to improve and purify themselves. The fragility of the early years renders them flexible and accessible to the counsels of experience and to those who should aid their progress. That is the time when one can best reform their character and curb their evil tendencies. Such is the duty that God entrusts to parents, a sacred mission for which they will have to answer. Consequently, childhood is not only useful, necessary, and indispensable, but it is also the natural result of the laws that God has established and which govern the universe. Dear listener, this is just uh, the words that the spirits gave to Kardec in answer to question 385 of the spirits book. 
fascinating, but we want to know more. We want to know how this happens. After the break, Bernadette Liao is going to be right here with us sharing about how to teach these teachings and prepare them for a successful reincarnation. We will return to our program after these messages. Do you find yourself with no time to stop and read or meditate about spiritism or spirituality? We have a great solution for you. The audio CD called Unfolding Our Spiritual Nature, Path of Harmony by Ra Tashira is an enlightening CD with a question and answer session as well. Feel the enrichment and purchase your copy today at www.fsbaltimore.org. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Learn more about Indigo and Crystal Children with the book The New Generation, The Spiritist View on Indigo and Crystal Children by Devado Franco with Vanessa Anzaloni. Whether you're a parent or not, this book will enrich your mind. Go to www.ssbaltimore.org and click on Bookstore and purchase your copy today. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral, digital, periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide. Subscribe now at www.spiritistmagazine.com. Now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here to talk about spirituality for kids and teens. And uh, to tell us more about it, we brought an expert in the field, Bernadette Liao. She is currently a board member of the Spiritist Society of San Diego and the coordinator of the Youth Spiritist Education, a subdivision of the United States Spiritist Council, developing a children's spiritist lesson plan book, which is being used by several different organizations, including the Spirit Society of Baltimore and the Spirit Society of Virginia. Since 2009, she has been in charge of the youth program at the U.S. Spirit Symposia. She is also a regular contributor to Kardec Radio with the Yes segment, answering questions to parents and educators on how to bring spiritual awareness and spiritist teachings to their children. She has been supporting the youth program at Spiritist Centers in the U.S. through workshops and lectures on on education. And as you already heard, one of her songs, she's a singer and a songwriter. Hi, Bernadette. Thank you so much for being with us at Kardec Radio today. Hi, Vanessa and Kardec Radio listeners. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. I'm so happy. Thank you, and thank you also for waking up so much earlier because we know of the hour difference in California. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. That's okay. I like to wake up earlier anyway. That's great. So, Bernadette, as we're talking about how to teach spiritism to children and youth, how did you become acquainted with spiritism? How has it happened? Oh, it was. You know, we usually say you become a spiritist through love or through pain. In my uh-huh. case, it was through pain like many of us. Uh, mm-hmm. When I was growing up, my mom was a medium. and She was a very ostensive medium that she could see, hear, and talk to spirits. But she had no knowledge of spiritism per se, which is spiritualism. So she was constantly sick with heavy medication. Everybody thought she was crazy. And I was Catholic, going to church and praying and talking to the priest, and everybody said that she was speaking with the devil and things like that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And growing up, there was nobody around me to explain that my mom was not crazy, but deep inside I knew. Mm -hmm. So growing up in a family that had a lot of, uh, let's say, deaths from past lives, very dysfunctional violence, addiction, I grew up like feeling no hope. And when I was older, in my when I was in my early twenties, uh, very bad relationships, 
I, I was to the point that I was going to give up living. Seriously, I go, there's no worth, it's no worth living. I don't know what to do in my life. I want to just die. And I was walking downtown Sao Paulo, just mm-hmm. crying like crazy, you know, in your mm-hmm. 20s. Mm-hmm. And something amazing happened. I got lost in downtown. And I ended up in a little street, side street, that I go, and I saw a bunch of people walking down a ramp. Mm. And I go, what is that? Is, is it a building? It's a school? And I walk there. And when I look up, it said, uh, Spiritist Federation of Sao Paulo. So wow. by chance, I found Spiritist Federation. <sighs> and I walk there, and somebody, you know, greeted me and said, why don't you come in and like a consultation? So I just loved it. And they received mm. me with so much love. I did all the, the treatment, and it took me one year of passes because I was so disturbed, and I had a lot of obsession that uh, it took me one year of treatment, and after that, I was just on it, taking mm. every single class that was available. I mm. was so happy, and I studied constantly the, the gospel according to spiritism for a whole year, and that was my joy because in that book, I found the answer for everything that was happening with my life, with my family, gave me strength, gave me courage and understanding. And that's why it's it's a spiritism for me. (laughs) It works and it has been working. It was, it was, let's say, by chance, but not really. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced that my spiritual guide led me to the Spiritist uh, Federation of Sao Paulo. Wow. (laughs) What a, what a... A coincidence. We know the coincidence doesn't exist, <laughs> but what a plan and how merciful those good spirits are because you got to the right place and uh, yeah. it transformed your life, right? From there on, it's, it, it became a new journey for you. It became a, a new journey and uh, <clears throat> because of my childhood, uh, so dysfunctional, and as a teenager, too, n- not having anybody to teach me and support me and explain to me what was going on. And I had this chance with the spiritism, and I guess that's why I have this passion for children and teenagers, because I don't want them to have to go through what I went through. Or even though we have trials and difficult times, if we have somebody to guide us, to explain here, honey, be patient. This is what's going on. Here's how you have the strength to deal with this situation. Why you were in such family. Gosh, it's so much easier. <laughs> mm. And I didn't have it. But I had later in life, you know. <laughs> yeah, then that, you could tell yourself that if you had spiritism back then, you would go through the difficult times much more easily, right? Yeah, well, you know, even think about killing myself, which I've thought many times. Mm, that's you know, interesting. Which is, is interesting. I just go, it's not worth living. I, I don't understand the pain. I don't understand what's going on with my family. I don't understand all these addictions, all those problems, all the violence, all the abuse. And and I feel the pain. And, and when I talk to teenagers nowadays, and I can relate to them. I know what they're going through, and I just embrace them. I say, I love you. You can do it. Let me explain to you. Here are some tools. And hang in there, buddy. You can do it. You're not going to give up. I will not let you give up because I love you. It's just sticks to my heart because I've been there. Exactly. And do you, is that one of the reasons why you you became so um, um, connected to youth and uh, children now making this effort to bring spiritism to them? Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons, and also as a mom, I have mm. a teenager daughter that also we had some challenges, and I de- I decided I want to help her, and as I was helping her, and I go, oh my gosh, I feel like I need to help parents too. I want to share with parents how how to help the situation. Um, mm. I work with kids and volunteer with kids and teenagers. And you know, I, I remember to today there was one one this girl. This girl, she's like 14 years old, and she came to me and said, "Miss Bernadette, I am convinced that God doesn't love me." 
Mm. God doesn't love me, period. Because if God loves me, I would not be born in this family. <laughs> wow. With a mom and dad like that, I feel lonely. There is no reason for living. So that's the main reason, because God doesn't love me, and that shocked me. You wow. know, And she's not the only one. Yeah. Those teenagers nowadays, they're feeling lost, lost. And if mm-hmm. we could teach them a little bit, start with the spirituality and the spiritism to explain why they are in warning search family, why they don't get along sometimes with their brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. you know, how to be patient, understanding, how to, those tools, they don't have it. And we do. I mean, spiritism does. <laughs> Exactly. So if we can bring that that awareness to them, my daughter she was going through a tough time. So when we finally sat down and I explained little by little about reincarnation, you know, teenager answer was, uh, "Excuse my name. Oh hell no! I better work things out. I don't want to come back with all those same people again. I better work on forgiveness, Mama." <laughs> <laughs> I go, yeah, yeah, well, let's work on that a little bit at a time. I just I just love them. I just can see in their heart, they're asking for answers. They're asking for answers, somebody to hold their hand, look in their eyes, say that you love them, you care about them. They are not alone. And there's this spiritual friends, all their mentors surround them. They just need to connect. And things will get better will mm-hmm. get better. Give them exactly. hope and tools. And, and and that's my passion. That's what I want to do. That's the one to travel around the world. I want to hug every single teenage and child <laughs> and, and tell them that. Because I did. I did. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for spiritism, I could not be here today. Or my exactly. own choice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and as you're talking about to talk to The teenagers of today, next week we're going to have a program with the famous John Gray on the book, uh, the best-selling book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. And as we uh, talked to him, he shared that if we go to his website, marsandvenus.com, we'll see that his daughter is nowadays one of the consultants, and she's specialized in consulting uh, youth. And the problems that they have is very common in their relationships. And he was saying exactly what you said, that nowadays they're so lost that they need some guidance. But where are they going to get guidance? Because oftentimes their parents are not uh, fully prepared or aware, so we need a lot of resources. And when you talk about teaching in spiritism, Bernadette, you're talking about things that are so applicable. But you, can you lay out to our listener? Because sometimes people listen to teaching spiritism to kids and youth. They think we're teaching them <laughs> to talk to spirits and crazy <laughs> stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and and I'm going to share my personal opinion. Some people may not agree. Okay. When I became a spiritist, and many of us, uh, the enlightenment is, is huge, we have the answers for every single thing in life. So believe me, I study Buddhism, Hinduism, Kabbalah, all those things. They have wonderful teachings, and I appreciate their teachings. But Spiritism answers every single question that I had. So we go, here are the kids, here are the teenagers. Let's teach them, them all the concepts, and we grab the Spirit's book and start to overload their little head with difficult comments. Uh, I mean, you know, terms. I I ask you, hold on, respect the child development, their cognitivity. They still cannot grasp difficult concepts. So we don't do that. We don't like, oh, everybody's medium, let's talk to spirits. No, Mm -hmm. with the kids, we should base the teachings of Jesus. We start with the moral teachings. What we want the kids to be, peacemakers. That's it. Keep that in mind. We want to teach them how to be peacemakers. How am I a peacemaker? Following the moral teachings of Jesus, using the gospel according to spiritism. Teach them Mm. about understanding, respect, love, tolerance, being patient, and the law of progress and the law of action and reaction. 
So we start right there. And of course, as they get, they get older, like preteen, they start to understand more difficult concepts. We introduce reincarnation, family ties, how we interact with each other. And in my opinion, when they are like um, an older teen, 14, 15, we go like, you know, peri spirit, more about mediumship with deep, you know, more uh, difficult concepts. We respect their development. And mm-hmm. and they get it. More important than anything nowadays in the world is the moral teachings. It's the teachings of our biggest teacher, <laughs> Jesus. Exactly. Right exactly. there. If we mm-hmm. Worry about that first. Worry mm-hmm. about that first. And then we go to the next level. And one of That's the my things... Suggestion. Uh, that that's it makes so much sense, and also we realize here the spirit side of Baltimore when Mentor Joseph advised us to start the campaign I honor my parents, which is so fundamental because it brings us back to what Emmanuel says, the foundation of the divine laws, which is in the Ten Commandments by Moses. And without mm-hmm. honoring parents, how can you be happy at home? And and the campaign that we also follow through, and that's why today we invited you to be here, it's every first Saturday of the month we're celebrating and paying a tribute to this uh, important law, which is honoring parents. And it belongs to the very teachings that you're talking about. Not only we need to respect our children, but they need to learn to respect parents as well. And I think this nowadays is so conflicting because I remember a teenager coming to me and saying, uh, but Vanessa, really, I I don't know how I'm going to um, honor my parent if he or she doesn't respect me. How am I going to respect and trust sometimes stupid things that he or she does? And, and that's very complicated. <laughs> That's a good point, too. And, of course, it's good to teach their kids to respect their parents and honor them. But one thing, you know, parents need to work on themselves, too. Um, As a parent, and I've seen, I volunteer at Unity Church or in in places like that, and a parent come to a spiritual center or, or a church, bring their kid and say, here it is, take it, now fix her for me. You know, we're having a problem here. Deal with it. Like, it's our responsibility to fix all the problems that's going on. We do our best to guide them. You know, spiritism spiritism, uh, leads you to happiness. It does not make you happy unless you want it, unless you do the job. You have to do the work a little bit, do the walk. So parents need to work on themselves. You want your your kid to be patient? Be patient. You want your child to be respectful? Be respectful. Start with you giving an example. One of my wishes, if I could, is to start a campaign to start in every spiritual center parenting classes. Mm-hmm. And I've taken many parenting classes, anger management classes, you name it. I went with my daughter. Whatever they told me, do it to help her, I did. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when you when you go to parenting classes, you learn some very effective tools, how to handle your child in certain situations, how to open communication. That's good. But you're going to notice that sometimes, even though you try, it's not going to work because there is a gap. The parents not only need to know the tools, but they need to know about reincarnation, family types why the kid is there. So if you could have parenting classes enlightened by the teachings of the spiritism, you would close the gap. Together, mm-hmm. one complement each other. The science and the spirit together. Specific classes on parenting. Well, they already parents, when they come, they go to the public meetings, to lectures, and it's good for the inner transformation, learning about gospel, but we desperately desperate need parenting classes enlightened by the teachings of spiritism together it's going to be amazing <laughs> exactly <laughs> <Somebody> <laughs> <all there. laughs> exactly you're so right and 
Bernadette, we're going to give a short break. When we come back, we want to listen to the song of forgiveness and tell more about these amazing songs of yours. Okay, thank you. Sure. We will return to our program after these messages. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. The International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba, on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be Charity and Spiritual Education in Building a World of Peace, 150 Years of the Gospel According to Spiritism. For more information, please visit the number 7 C-E-M dot org. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. A new great book and tool for kids and educators. The children's book, Our Father by the Spirit May May, psychographed by Chico Xavier, is available for purchase at www.edisayofamerica.com. Buy your copy today. And now we return to our program. This is Bernadette Liao in her amazing CD, Bernadette. Is it easier for us to learn these lessons through music? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, I always, um, even when I, I'm I'm a teacher, I'm at this moment a sub elementary school teacher, and I know that whenever I cannot teach my kids any concept, I make it up. I made a, I make a song, a, a song. I in science, math. 
English, any subject, I just have this, it comes easy. And I was teaching spirituality and talking about, they, it's, it's easier to get this on your mind, in your mind, when you put into words and songs. Because we remember songs, even the songs that we don't like, we see ourselves singing. <laughs> it's, it's catchy, right? Mm-hmm. It's very catchy. So when I decide to write the songs, I go, it's for children. So I want to be very simple with repetition. And, and, and I start writing about forgiveness because they could not let go. When, don't we all, not only kids, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was talking to them, I hate my mom, I hate my dad. Oh, my brother did this, my sister did this. Oh, I hate this this, this kid at school. Some of the kids that work in the past were in gangs, and they want to get back to them. They want to hit them. They want to hurt them. I go, so, okay, we need to work on forgiveness. So we talk a lot about letting go. More than the word forgiveness, which is is a difficult concept for children. Mm-hmm. So instead of you saying forgive, you start with letting go. Mm-hmm. Let go. Let go and focus on something else. Let go of that thought. And then we add the concept of forgiveness because mm-hmm. it's hard. So I made the song up. I did with the kids. And we did a lot of uh, hand movements and gestures. And, and they remember Sometimes we are there having problems. I go, remember the song? They go, forgive, forgive, forgive three times, forgiveness. So <laughs> uh, it's good you know, and, and funny because mm-hmm. I, when I made the CD, was thinking only for children. <clears throat> but a lot of us adults have the CD in their cars, and I get emails and comments that said, Bernadette, I was so mad. And this guy cut me <laughs> off in traffic. And then I put your C D and I just forgive, 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 thank you. <laughs> and, and you know, music is amazing. Music is a is a great uh way of te- teaching children anything because they will remember. They will forget what you said, but they remember the melody and once they start singing, they go, Oh, I remember, I remember I remember songs when I was a little girl to today, don't you? Do you remember your some of your exactly. songs when you're growing up. <laughs> yes, we all do. The question is, how can people access that CD? Oh, it's on my website, mm-hmm. um, com. Just like I say, com, or I also bought the domain name, bernadellial.com, and you can download the MP3, and or just buy the CD, and it has a lot of fun, fun songs. I I wanted something to be really fun and dance along, and you want to just happy because music can be very joyful. And kids, they want that. They don't want anything that's boring. So <laughs> I I just like okay, let's do it. Let's sing. Energy and remember to forgive. It was really fun project. Very fun. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, this is also a way, as you're saying, that can educate. So parents, we can also tell parents that they can use CDs such as this to teach their children about spiritism, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, although uh, when I did the CD, the CD I did like in general. It doesn't matter if you're not a spiritist. Mm -hmm. If you just want a positive affirmations, meditations, it is it is spiritual. And in my songs, one of the songs I talk about being the Christ in you, you, Uh like being like Christ. So, independent of your uh, spirituals or not, but in general, it's very very positive. A lot of people that bought the CD from me were not (laughs) spiritists. Uh-huh. From other churches and friends of friends, they are Catholic, Christian, Baptist. It doesn't matter. They go, oh my gosh, it's so good. It makes me feel good and think about all those things. And of course, it's all there, available. <laughs> you want to exactly. enjoy the music. So, you have been also, Bernadette, teaching through workshops. And there is a special upcoming workshop for educators that is going to be held in Denver, Connecticut. Can you tell us more about the plan? It's going to be a two-day event. Is that right? 
Yes, today event um, is going to be at the Allen Card Expert Center in Bethel, Connecticut, and it's about educating the spiritist educator how to hmm. bring joy, excellence, and creativity to all the teachings. And as you bring that into your teachings, you also bring all that to your life. So it's two mm -hmm. days. Saturday is Sunday, September 8th and the 9th. September, uh, Saturday's half day starts with lunch. And then Sunday is the whole day. And mm -hmm. I was very blessed and grateful for the opportunity to do this. And it's the first time they're going to do it in English. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy to try it. You can't believe it. It's like jumping in the time to you. <laughs> and now we have more people coming. Uh, uh, you know, English speakers. It completely opened the door. Now people that could not come previously, any other workshops, seminars, now they are joining because we are doing great. English. Um, we are talking about development of a child, the learning styles, classroom tips, you know, being an educator, a teacher per se. And then we're going to go into all the challenges that we find in the teaching, you know, dealing with the kids, with parents, our personal life. Because being a volunteer is a lot of work. And sometimes we feel burned out. Mm -hmm. we feel, okay, I'm here alone. I don't have the help that I need. How to be inspired, how to motivate ourselves. And we're going to have a lot of fun because, of course, I'm going to bring games. I'm going to bring music. I'll make, you know, you become a <laughs> child again, a teenager, reminding all the joy. We grow up. We are so busy with our lives, with our families and working, stress about money, stress about this. Then we forget that joy when we were little kids. So it's going to be very joyful and, of course, a lot of information, a lot of theory and practical things um, with intention to inspire educators already or people they are thinking about volunteer, volunteering. If you want to be a volunteer or even parents, they are thinking about it. So mm -hmm. join us. Um, you can talk to Tininha Cabral at mm -hmm. cabralt at yahoo.com and make reservations. There's yeah. still some place available. Mm -hmm. so, and it doesn't matter. Even if you're there in East Coast, you know, if maybe if you are in Florida, it's no, I mean, they're here more, Texas or whatever in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, you exactly. Know, and, and people, if they want to go... To the website, right? They can go to www.aksc.danbury.org slash events, and there they're going to find more information about um, mm -hmm. of the, the event, which is going to be yeah. very, very important. But, Bernadette, when I ask another question, because uh, somebody emailed to us a question that you touched already very lightly, and now we want to explore more. Because many parents nowadays, they bring their kids to spiritist centers. We're, we're, we're customizing it to spiritist. I've seen it. They say, I want you to teach my children about this because uh, fix this child. <laughs> and it's not the right <laughs> attitude, right? Because whereas parents, they yep. have the mission, first and foremost, uh -huh. right? Yep. Yeah, I, this is so common. I don't want to do my work. I don't want to do the job here. Society fixed the problem for me, and, and this happens today with public schools. Mm -hmm. We teachers are overloaded because the parents teach the kids no moral values, no discipline or things like that, and drop them at the school and say, here, please fix my child. He's, you know, being disrespectful and et cetera. So, this happens, and when it happens, and if you if a parent is coming to a spiritist center, then you should be open, which is hard. Dealing with parents, believe me, is a challenging sometimes. <laughs> mm. It's a challenge. Mm. So the parent, we need we need to talk to the parent about inner transformation. That's a good approach. Let's mm. talk about inner transformation. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's start with ourselves. And somehow, in a very friendly conversation, we have to let the parents know, look, let's start work on yourself. And then you will see the change in the child. It's going to come naturally. That's why I mentioned again about the parenting classes, because parents have, they, 
they think they're perfect sometimes. Oh, or I've, I've been raising my child the same way I've been raising my mom and then raised me. Oh, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. In some cases, because we have a new generation, we have new kids. The spirits that are incarnating right now is not like us. Mm-hmm. You know, before with my with my dad, I I fear my dad so much, even though I didn't agree with mm-hmm. things that he did, but dare me to say anything. <laughs> I go, oh my exactly. God, thank me. Today <laughs> the kids dare more. They speak their mind. So we need to adapt, parents. We need to, we I say we because I'm a parent, as I mentioned before, we need to constantly work on ourselves. That spirit that's right there in your hand came to you for a reason. Remember, that little kid is just a kid in the physical body. There it is, an old spirit. And God knows, maybe in past life, you could have been the child, and that child could have been your mom or dad. So mm-hmm. be careful with it, you know. It's bringing the awareness to the parents that even if you ask us to ask the educator, fix my child, is is a work. Depend. We need to work the educator, the parent, the child, the family, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> exactly, happens a lot. And as you said before, we really need to give support, like support group for parents. We have that mm-hmm. monthly going on at the Spirit Side of Baltimore and also the Spirit Side of Virginia. And I know also from being there before, the Spirit is a side of of uh, Danbury, the Alan Kardec Spirit Side of Connecticut. They also have a support group it happens weekly for parents, and it's fascinating because it gives a lot of support. By the way, we have a listener here named uh, Laura, and she has just written that she's looking forward to meet Bernadette next weekend in Bethel. That's good, huh, Bernadette? Yeah. We're looking forward to that, too. If we could, we would be there, but we won't be available. But we encourage everybody to go because, as Bernadette is saying to us, it's really of the essence to get to know more on how to share this is very inspiring and uh, wonderful teachings uh, to our children and youth but Bernadette you have already mentioned we need to tailor around the age group that's also very important you mentioned at the very beginning that there are different levels and also we need to customize it so what are the resources that people may find available in English today to get to know more about, um, to, to learn, to learn and to teach children about spiritism? Uh, <clears throat> well, as you mentioned previously, I just finished um, one lesson plan book, just one for now. We are working more, more on having that available in the future, and it was a wonderful work of volunteers. I had Edson Cornwell helping me, Carla Fonseca, Dulcinea's story, Mirella Campos, Calder Nunes. Those are people that helped in this process, and what I did was coordinate this and teach them how to write a lesson plan, something that everybody can do. Now, uh, there are, if you go to the uh, United States Versus Council, you're going to have some material probably in your website, too, in the Baltimore. You know, there is there. There is a lot in, in Portuguese that some friends are translating. Mm-hmm. But here we have more material in English. But independent of even the spiritism material, there are others that you can use, like drama is optional. There are other books for teenagers that you can find. But what I want to try to do is to empower people to write their own lessons because they can. They they wait, saying, oh, well, wait till there is something that available. Look, all you need, if you don't have anything right now in your spiritual center, and, and I got the call all the time, oh, I need mm-hmm. material, new material. All you need is the story. All you need is the story. Why? Mm-hmm. Because kids learn through stories and in mm-hmm. the context. One mistake that we do trying to teach in spiritism is so here, today I'm going to teach about forgiveness, for example. This is <laughs> forgiveness. This is how it works. Okay, forget <laughs> about it. They'll live there. They won't even remember you talk about forgiveness. They will remember about uh, the dress, the pink dress that another child was wearing or something like that. So put that into a context. Put in a little story. But I don't have a story. Okay, go get any chicken soup for the soul. There is chicken soup for 
so many reasons. Mm-hmm. Bring the little story for your child, you know, for the teen, for the little kid, for the animal lover, whatever it is. And I guarantee you, and I can prove to you and give you an example, that any any story that you bring, you can connect with one one chapter, one paragraph of the gospel according to Spiritism, every single one. Mm-hmm. Because it's going to talk about love, it's going to talk about forgiveness, it's going to talk about understanding, it's going to talk about patience. And, and, and you can do it. So if you don't have anything available right now, be creative. I'm telling you, get a... Uh, you know, stories and start putting that story and apply the Spiritist teachings mm-hmm. into that story and you see how they are connect. The Spirit's mm-hmm. book, you can put any question of the Spirit's book in one of the on one story. I guarantee you. <laughs> exactly. And and as you customize it, it's much more appealing. By the way, for people who wanna know other books by the uh, International Spiritist Council you can go to edisayofamerica.com where they have books also for children. And one of them mm-hmm. is uh, Our Father, which is the latest translated one, right, Bernadette? And it's fascinating yeah. as well. It's, it's fascinating. It's all there. It's, mm-hmm. If you really want it, if you really want it, you can find it. You can work. Instead of sitting here, it's not going to be easy. Kardec never said, Jesus never said, Come on, follow me. It's a piece of cake. It's easy. There's no, you know, don't have to worry about. Just come here. No, he said, you know what? Not like like I'm saying. If you want to follow me, you know, take your cross and follow yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, you know, little trials in life. We know. And you guess what? I'm going to take it and I'm going to follow you. And I'm going to follow the teachings of Jesus. And we can teach the kids too. Now, sitting and waiting that the magic lesson is going to just come to you. You know, it may not happen. We have some resources, but you've got to do a little bit of work. Why? Because you know your spirit center. You know your children. You know the personality. You know how to adapt lessons. Now, you can do it. If you truly believe in yourself, you put in the time and commitment, you can create the most powerful lessons. And also, remember, you're not alone. You have all your spiritual guides, the the mentors of the center, the mentors in the the educational department that's there inspiring you, putting the right person to talk to you. And you see the amazing things that you can create, but you must want it. (laughs) Exactly. So, Bernadette, we're going to give a short break. When we come back, we want to listen to the song, a healing power and talk more about the healing power of the teachings of spiritism. Okay. We will return to our program after these messages. Would you like to liberate yourself from your life struggles or to find inner balance? The Inner Journey CD has three beautiful visualizations that will help you bring harmony to your life. As Joanna D'Angeli tells us to, live in a way that you leave enlightening footprints in your pathway as if they were stars pointing out the pathway to happiness. To find this CD, go to the bookstore on the Spiritist Society of Baltimore webpage, www.ssbaltimore.org, that is www.ssbaltimore.org, and start your inner journey today. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. A new great book and tool for kids and educators. The children's book, Our Father by the Spirit May May, psychographed by Chico Xavier, is available for purchase at www.edisayofamerica.com. Buy your copy today. And now we return to our program.
Healing Power by Bernadelia. Bernadette, I have to say, it's it, it's so catchy. <laughs> I'll never forget this. <laughs> I felt like dancing and really like you feel yeah. it really brings that joy through you. It's unbelievable. It's very, very good. You remember, I always remember um, the uh, first in Falso in Florida. You were there, right? Yes, were I was there. there. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm you know, during St. Paul's, I'm so busy. In the I know, you're very busy, yeah. It's like, and I remember when we brought the kids on the stage, and there's all those kids, and we start singing, and we had all all the participants, you know, the adults standing up and singing and doing the song with the hand movement, and you could tell the joy and the joy in afterwards. Uh Several, several people came to me and said, you know, I was a little bit tired because, you know, simple is a lot of information you bring after a while. You get a little bit tired processing, but it's a wonderful thing. And I said, and then music, music is just, it's like energized, it's like a posse. You mm-hmm. know, it's like I receive a but posse this year, to wake mm-hmm. up. But I tell Say you, this, this, this year, when we were at the symposium in Atlanta, when you were teaching, when you and the kids and the youth present were on stage, 
and you were sharing with us, the audience, what you've taught them, it's unbelievable because I could even teach in our lectures to adults the five steps, <laughs> right? You want to tell the listener what it is about? Because it's oh fascinating. God. People should bring their teach their children and youth to the symposia, right? Which is I know every it's April symposia. It's yeah, and it's not babysitting. It's not babysitting. <laughs> I have to make that clear, and and that's why sometimes. Uh, I have problems. No, nope. I say parents say, "Look, my child is three years old or four years old. Can you stay here?" And go N- no, because we are really teaching them a lesson based on on the topics of the symposium. Teach them all spiritual teachings, and it's amazing. We all connect. The kids love it. It's it's such a joy. I even invite some parents to say, "You know." Come and see. Come and take a look. You you will like it. I'm so glad you like it. Many of the teachings that I do with the kids, we can use in our everyday life. Exactly. And they are very empowering. Mm-hmm. They are they empowering are, and they love. They love. <laughs> and And, you know, it's like... Um, we also want to share with children. I, I want to open the line to Dulce. She's there to make a comment. But before we do so, just to give you, we're talking about the healing power. Just to discuss a little bit more about how the Spiritist teachings can be very healing as well. I have here a short story, Bernadette, as you were talking about mm-hmm. stories, about Chico Xavier. It's in the book uh, Beautiful Cases by Chico Xavier through the authorship of Hamido Gama. He talks about uh, the... Um, the bananas. And one day, Chico Xavier was uh, visiting uh, people in a specific uh, house in the city of Peter Leopoldo, Brazil. And he was there to help them. And when he got in the house, he passed by the kitchen and saw these bananas. And they were beautiful. They were really delicious. They looked like very delicious. And he really felt like eating them. But, you know, no time. The the case was serious, says Hamido Gama, and uh, he forgot about his wish to eat the banana. And then after the meeting, uh, as, no, after no, during the time, he saw two spirits while he was helping the people in the family. He saw two earthbound spirits nearby by the door, and they looked at the bananas and said to themselves, let us get in and eat the bananas. And the other one quickly got in, they ate the bananas, and they left. And these are discarnate spirits. And he was so surprised by what happened that he asked Emmanuel for an explanation. And then Emmanuel explained, well, this happened, this usually happens in houses where its inhabitants do not pray and do not watch. They... Now the bananas, they are without vitamins, and they will do harm to those who actually eat them because they're impregnated with very heavy energies or fluids, as we say in spiritism. And then Emmanuel explains a little more. He says, our Protestant brothers are right when they pray, when they are eating their meals, because by intuition, in a single act of Eating at home resides our defense. In prayer, we have an act of gratitude to God, and we attract its blessings for what we eat in our home. So imagine teaching, of course, to a specific age group, stories that are so real and vital like this. Maybe this explains why so many things are happening regarding balances, um, in our eating habits as well, which is a part of the program uh, of spiritism, right, Bernadette? Eating well and healthy, taking care of the body and spirit. Yeah, that's that's the whole that's the whole idea, you know. Kardec always says, take care of the body, take care of the spirit, and because we need both, we need both. Um, mm-hmm. Today. Um, as I have a, uh, I have a daughter, and of course I have a lot of. She has other girlfriends, so I'm hanging around more among among girls. And a lot of t- 
teenagers, there goes, they don't want to eat well, blemic, or about the appearance, not taking care of their body. And this is a perfect story to to bring that topic of taking care of your body. What is the beauty? Why it's important also to take care of your physical body? It houses the soul. It houses the spirit. Every single story, and this story is so beautiful that you just mentioned. And mm-hmm. with this story, there are so many that it can bring to the child and teenager the healing that they need, the understanding that they need as long as we connect to their lives, what they're going through right now. Mm -hmm. So we need to connect with them. We need to know, hey, what's going on? Sometimes when I teach, I go the first 10 minutes, we do a check-in. Okay, let's tell me a little bit what's going on in your life so I can pick up the vibe. I know what's going on. And then when I bring the story, I connect to what they shared. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They guide us. And the story is a wonderful, wonderful tool. And the story of Chico Xavier is just amazing. You can exactly. Find lessons, yeah. And uh, we have here Laura mentioning in the chat room of Kardec Radio, I agree with Bernadette that we learn better when we have our hands on. Teaching spiritism is all about experiencing with the kids how Jesus can touch us by stories, by listening what they think, by giving them room to express their ideas. Thank you, Laura, for your comment. And now we're going to open the line, Bernadette, to Dulce, who is here uh, to share some comments. Hey, Dulce. Hi, Dulce. Hey, how are you? I didn't expect to talk to you. I thought it was just leave a message, but I'm very pleased to talk yeah. to you. Welcome very to nice. Kardec Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Very beautiful and Dulce work. And was one of the helpers. Her and her husband helped That's with the first good. book with lessons. They were amazing. That's wonderful. So, Dulce, you, you want to yeah. share a comment? Two things I would really would like to share. I really like the fact with which you mentioned that um, we should and must to change the way to raise our children. It's not the same way we were raised because our parents are different. Like you said, it is. The children these days, I, my personal opinion, I believe that they are a little bit more advanced than we were. So they need much more. So we, they need the parents to be more connected with them and work with them and grow with them. Mm-hmm. Personally, I had to go to therapy in order to help my children mm-hmm. because I I was raised then the way I was raised and it was not working despite they being the, uh, they are very lovely children and I had learned many many lessons from them thank God two years after we are doing really well and uh, the second uh, that I would like to comment is the fact mm-hmm. just a mm-hmm. little uh, is the fact that uh, we should uh, do um, our own lessons, like Bernadette says, absolutely. Every spirit center has a different profile of children, and we need to go by that, never forgetting the teachings of uh, Alain Kardec and Jesus Christ, the five books, because they are able to comprehend that. It's a very comprehensive teaching for the children, um, and that's where you work. And on top of that, embrace what's going on in the world right now and the moral to change what they already know and adds up with. And that's what I would like to share. And another thing I would like to share, Edison and I were adopting a child. So this moment um, we have five children in our home, two stepchildren, wow. two <laughs> our children, and one adopted children. <laughs> Oh, wow. Congratulations. That's the work of the spirit has You never stop. That's beautiful, yeah. Dulce. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for these uh, the sharing these comments. And uh, God bless you and the family, the new member, and the works that you and uh, your husband and the group there in Long Island have been doing. Thank you. You're welcome. Now we have five... Now we have five children to come to the Spiritual Symposium next year. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right. (laughs) 
Yeah, your two girls came to to San Francisco and they were just amazing and participating and learning. It was was a really good experience. Now we we have more. We need more children to continue this work too. Not trying yeah. to create a burden on them or all their responsibility because it's just natural. When yes. I see my daughter, when I give I teach her some of the when she's open, because you haven't understand teenagers, you know, sometimes they, they want to hear, sometimes they don't want to. You respect a lot of communication. But the little things that you teach, I I caught her telling her friends. When they are going to a tough time, she says, okay, now you need to calm down because you're lowering your energy. You're going to attract negative energy or maybe negative spirits, so pray. And it doesn't matter how hard it is, you have to suck it up. Because it might come back here, and they said, "I go, oh my gosh, she got it." <laughs> I was mm-hmm. listening, so mm-hmm. proud. And <laughs> I see her telling others, and now other kids are coming and asking me questions about spiritism. We don't even naturally because they answer their questions; they are so happy with it. And then they start talking to other teenagers, to other kids. See how wonderful it is. Yes. You need to keep going. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Dulce. Thank you. All right. So, Bernadette, you know, we're in the final minutes of our conversation okay. here, although we have a lot more show yet to go with the segments and everything mm-hmm. else. But, Bernadette, as you were talking about these experiences and for you specifically, um, because for children it may be a little easier for parents, but we we will always tell that there is always a way out for youth to come. And I remember this past uh, uh, symposium, the mentors handed to me uh, an important advice that I shared through the kindness of uh, Daniel Santos and Christian DeMello, that we need to get the youth more involved and uh, a sign that maybe the presentation of the 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 posters of the symposium uh would you have other ideas as well in that regard in in each and every spirit center how can we get the youth more engaged and more involved okay one thing that helps uh they feel alone sometimes they go it's embarrassing oh i'm the only one uh, this is a teenager thing, independent of being a spiritist or not, whatever. So we need to connect them with other teenagers, if possible, of other spiritist centers. So you do a rally, you do a camp with teenagers, so they see that they are not the only ones. This helps us a lot. So go, oh, look at it. They can connect and can empower. They can create a club, a spiritist youth club, where mm-hmm. they're going to hang out, they're going to do something. They need to, to, because it's all about fun, teenagers, mm-hmm. and it's all about connecting with each other, right? And, of course, we're being spiritist teachings. Then you would start slowly giving them some assignments and Charity work, create a project that they can do to help the spiritual center, to help the the community. Uh, they can do the prayers when we have the meetings. We having you know the public meetings. Every meeting there is one teenager that's going to do an opening prayer, and at first they can write their own prayer and read so they don't feel embarrassed. And the symposium, I would like the, to have more teenagers. To help, I have Gabriel. I had Gabriel, and it was just amazing to have him there, and the kids loved it. Uh, just, just think about. It. There are ways, but they need to connect with other teams from outside, local and regional, from the region. So they feel, look, there's somebody like me, another teenager, and their mom. You know, make them. They always tell me this. My mom made me go to the spiritual center. <laughs> they always say that to me. <laughs> I just don't want to go, and I'm here. And the same problem mm-hmm. with the teens is start like that. They go, oh, I'm here. My parents support me. And then after an hour or two, they are laughing. Mm-hmm. They are happy. And they go, oh, my gosh, Mom, I had so much fun. I can't wait to the next one. <laughs> I go, oh, see? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there is a lot to do there. And one of the things is really what you're saying. Just keep sharing with our children what makes us also feel good. So if people want to get, and hopefully they do, uh, the CD, In My Heart, Spiritual and Inspirational Songs by Bernadette Liao, they go to? 
www.bethelight.com. Is that right? No. BeTheLightShine.com. BeTheLightShine.com. LightShine. LightShine. Sorry. Yeah. Great, great, That's great. Okay. Oh, BernadetteLeo.com. All right. And, and Bernadette, also for Spirit Centers, if they want to buy um, CDs, do you give a discount or something for them to yeah. buy in bulk? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. just just send send me an email through the website and we will we will make this happen. Whatever uh-huh. is best and fits your budget. The yes. goal is not profit for me at this moment is just to spreading the world and bringing joy, you know, in the spirit of teachings. That's a sure That's thing. So Bernadette, your final comments to the listener who is there trying to understand how they can teach their children and youth about spiritism? Well, parents, educators, uh, the first thing that I tell you is love your children with all your heart and embrace the idea of reincarnation. We read reincarnation in the book. We read about theory, but it has to go beyond that. You need to truly feel in your heart as you look at your child with so much love, no matter the behavior, no matter how hard and tough it is, you know that whatever you do, whatever you say, is going to make a huge difference, not only in this life, but in the future lives of this child. Remember, Spiritism opens your mind, opens your heart, opens your soul for understanding, brings love, brings consolation, brings healing. And you, parents, you there, you are a spiritist. You have all those tools and this power in your hand. So make a good use of it. Remember, you're not alone. You are loved. God is with you. Inspire yourself in the teachings of Jesus and Alan Kardec, and you're going to see that sooner than you expect, this world will become a better place. Those children will be peacemakers and instruments of love. Empower yourself. Trust yourself. Trust God. And you and we are all going to be God's disciple in this world. That's it that I want to share with you. Thank you, Bernadette, for being with us at Kardec Radio and for sharing so much joy. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for having me, Vanessa. And I'll oh. see you around. See you. Thank you. So, dear listener, right now we're going to give a short break. When we come back, we have more. We have beautiful segments and many more inspirational insights for you. We will return to our program after these messages. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. A new great book and tool for kids and educators. The children's book, Our Father by the Spirit May May, psychographed by Chico Xavier, is available for purchase at www.edisayofamerica.com. Buy your copy today. Kardec Radio, to learn more about Spiritism. The newest edition of the Medium's Book by Alan Kardec is now available. Purchase your copy online or via your ebook reader. Simply go to www.edicifamerica.com today. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Join us every Thursday live, Evolution in Two Worlds. A journey of the soul through the teachings of the spirit doctor, Andrea Luis. Connect at www.tvcei.com, channel 2. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Spiritism for Everyone, the online study of the Spirit's Book and the Gospel According to Spiritism. Spiritism for Everyone meets every Wednesday evening and Saturday morning using the latest technology in web conferencing. You can join in from any computer in the comfort of your home or office, no matter where you are in the U.S. or the world. Spiritism for Everyone is open, free, and requires no registration. To access the web-like meetings, go to www. 
www.spiritus.us. Spiritism for Everyone is a program of the United States Spiritist Council. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we just talked to Bernadette Liao. She is a master's in education and also she is one of the leading forces of teaching spiritism to children and youth in the United States. She is going to be in a week in the Allan Kardec Spiritist Center in Bethel, Connecticut, giving a beautiful workshop. It's a day and a half, September 8th and 9th, and you're invited to join. You just if you need more information, just call 203-744-4074 or go to the website www.akscdenbury.org and get to know more about this workshop for educators and parents as well. It's a beautiful opportunity to learn more about hands-on tools on how to teach spiritism. And now we want to know more. And Dr. Magalhães, Marco Magalhães, is now sharing with us about one important topic that we need to be aware of and empower ourselves, getting to know more about depression in adolescence from a spiritist and scientific perspective. What do we do? How do we get out of this? How can spiritism help us? Let us listen to this now. Good morning, dear Kardec Radio listener. Welcome to our segment, Spiritism in Your Life. Today we're going to spend a few minutes discussing about a very interesting topic, which is depression in adolescence. It is interesting because for many years people thought that kids and teenagers wouldn't get depressed. But nowadays we know not only teenagers get depressed, but actually the prevalence is fairly high. Recent studies show that up to 8% of adolescents are depressed. However, the number is probably higher because Depression in adolescence is underdiagnosed because the symptoms sometimes are very, very difficult to recognize. In adults, we would say that the typical overwhelming sadness will be a very uh, characteristic symptom of depression. But adolescents, they can have a number of other symptoms that include irritability, difficulties at school, changes in sleep habits, and many others. From a medical, scientific point of view, the exact cause of depression is unknown. And unfortunately, depression in adolescents may be associated with many other problems that include abuse of alcohol and other substances, disruptive behavior disorders, physical or sexual abuse, trauma, and others. And when we are talking about depression, we are not referring to occasional sadness and irritability that's very common in teenagers, but particular to these mood changes that are persistent and represent an impairment on the ability of the teenager to sustain a normal life. Typically, major depression will include at least five of the symptoms listed. Number one, depressed or irritable mood for most of the day, nearly every day. Number two, markedly diminished interest or pleasure in almost all activities. Number three, change in appetite or weight. Number four, insomnia or excessive sleep. Number five, talking or moving more slowly or quickly than normal. Number six, fatigue or loss of energy. Number seven, feelings of worthlessness or guilt. Number eight, difficulty concentrating or making decisions. And number nine, recurring thoughts of death or suicide. Based on this sometimes paradoxical symptoms, you can start to see now why is it so difficult sometimes to make a diagnosis of depression in an adolescent unless you know him or her really well. Dear listener, there are two important messages that we want to leave with you today. First is that we have to keep an eye on our kids because very often they're showing clear signs of depression to us and we can't see it. Talk to them. Get closer and closer. Try to reach them up to a point that you can start to understand what's going on in their minds and then we can seek help. And the second message, which is even more important, is that depression is treatable, both from a medical point of view and a spiritual point of view. Spiritism can help 
clarify to us a lot of those changes that happened during adolescence and some of the reasons why is it fairly common to see adolescents with major depressive disorder. The great medium Divaldo Franco once said, Childhood and adolescence are, thus, transitional stages when resources should be employed to work upon the intellect and moral human being so as to empower him to conquer the infinite. As organic maturation occurs, often under prescriptive needs arising from experiences of previous lives, the phenomenon presents itself as a character of the spiritual being. Thanks to such circumstance, the transition can be calm and positive, or harrowing and disturbing. Highly relevant in this phase is the presence of love and discipline with a view to future potential. Here lies the importance of human childhood as the longest among the animals. It is that time when we set out the lessons that should guide our existence through development. The teenager develops the dormant imprints of the being, which will be expressed according to environmental, familial, educational and social factors. So as you can see from the words of Givaldo Franco, Spiritism brings a new understanding of this transition by incorporating the understanding that we are spirits, eternal spirits. When you recognize signs of depression, first thing you need to do is to learn about it. Educate yourself about what is depression. Try to connect to the person. Try to talk to them. That's the very first step. The second step, seek medical help. And most importantly, Spiritism can offer you anti-depression help kit, as Dr. Vanessa Anceloni once wrote in the Spiritist magazine, number 5, from December 2008. The Spiritist therapy encompasses seven tools that could be effective in either prevention and or treatment of depression. Number one is in the transformation. Number two is the use of therapeutic visualizations. Number three, prayer. Number four, passes. Number five is the gospel at home or the God at home meeting. Number six, intelligent sleep. And number seven, these obsession. All of this can be freely accessed in any spiritist center close to you. So keep in mind that spiritism has a lot to offer in order to help us cope with depression. As our final message to you, remember that depression is treatable and we need to seek help. And spiritism is here to help you too. But the most important thing you can do is remember that we need to connect to God always. Thank you, my friends. And my God bless us. Dear listener, these amazing segments by our friends. And now, before we relay to the segment of Kirsten de Mello, Spiritist Moment, she's going to talk about praying to spirits. Let us read a message from Emmanuel, entitled, God Knows. He says, in reality, God knows all sufferers. Do not accuse anyone for the pain that exists in the streets. Do not worsen the struggle of the children without home. Do not judge assumed guilty people. What heavens want to know is what you're doing, goodness. Do not condemn, help instead, because God believes in you. This is a message by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. Now let us listen to the beautiful segment, Spiritist Moment, by Kirsten DeMello. Welcome back, dear Cardiac Radio listeners, to the Spiritist Moment. As we give continuation to Part 3 of the Spirit's Book, studying about the spiritual divine laws of life, the natural divine laws. Well, we come to a sort of an end to the sub-part of the law of worship. When they end this particular part, talking about prayer, as we've been discussing for several weeks now, or the several last sessions we've been together sharing. And it's interesting, in question 666, many of us have asked that question, have pondered about it. Even everyday life, people may ask these questions. Can I pray to my loved ones? 
can I pray to this spirit or to that saint? These questions have crossed many people's minds, and the spirits are here to clarify it for us, very interestingly enough. In question 666, the question is posed, may we pray to spirits? And very wisely, as we paraphrase, they say, well, we can. But it really depends on the level, the vibration that the spirit is that we pray to. Perhaps they aren't at a level where they can even help us. And likewise, if we're trying to pray to high spirits, are our prayers able to be heard? And we learn with a book that's entitled Between Heaven and Earth, psychographed by the Brazilian medium Francisco Candido Xavier, by the spirit Andrea Luiz, we learn in chapters 1 and 2 about something called diverted prayer. Specifically, on page 16, chapter 2, this question is asked, what is diverted prayer? We learn that diverted prayer is one where the direction of the luminous impulse has been diverted, thus reaching another target. So what does that mean in layman's terms? Well, when we pray with great faith to perhaps a spirit, but that spirit is not elevated enough, so it gets diverted and goes somewhere else. Let's give an example, because this helps really to drive this home. In chapter 2, it talks about a case. A case where a young girl named Evelina... She's on Earth, she's incarnate, she's actually a teenager, around 15 or 16. And her, she prays to her deceased mother with so much faith and hope unknown to her. Her mother is actually in a very deplorable situation, but because she prayed with so much faith and hope, her prayer was not able to be sent to the mother, who was not in any condition to receive it. It actually deflected and deferred up to the higher planes, so much so that it reached the mentors, where Mentor Clarencio was. And he goes on to explain to Andrea Luis about diverted prayer. And he quotes, and he says, we quote Clarencio, and he says, The girl has so vehemently asked for spiritual help that her petitions changed directions and have arrived here in this form. And, dear friends, we encourage you to go and read this book. It's very enlightening, especially when we learn, learn more about prayer in these first couple of chapters. And even the story that unfolds because of one young girl's faithful prayer. So, dear friends, we may pray to spirits, although ultimately as a sh- the spirits share with us that, and ultimately the spirits share with us that really that the power of the prayer however, is in proportion to the degree of evolution and always derives from the creator of all things, without whose permission nothing is done. For this reason, the prayers that we address to them are only effective if pleasing to God, meaning the prayers that we send to others are only effective if pleasing to God, if in God's divine will. We already learned in the past couple of weeks that our prayers are heard. But they do not change necessarily God's will. Now, God does always send good and noble spirits to assist us and to help us. And we know that prayer is a duty. Whenever we see someone who is ill or sick in whatever form, whether it's spiritual, emotional, physically, it is our duty. But let us think about this. And let us tune our minds and know that we can pray to nobling spirits, but ultimately it is God who oversees all things. Something for us to think about as we will give continuation next week about the law of worship. And as always, we wish you many blessings. We will return to our program after these messages. For the first time ever, the book, Between Heaven and Earth, by the spirit Andre Luis, psychographed by Chico Xavier, is now in English. This is a novel that offers information about the relationship that exists in the activities of the spirit on the two planes of life. Purchase your copy today at www.edisayofamerica.com. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Now in English, the book Action and Reaction by the spirit Andrea Luiz Psychographed by Chico Xavier. Buy your copy online or via your ebook reader. Go to www.edicefamerica.com today. Do 
the International Spiritist Council is organizing and promoting the 7th World Spiritist Congress, which will be held in Havana, Cuba on March 23rd through the 25th of 2013. The Congress theme will be charity and spiritual education in building a world of peace. 150 years of the gospel according to spiritism. For more information, please visit www.7cem.org. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, you're listening to beautiful insights on spiritism that we can also share with our children. Right now, we have the final segment, God at Home, as the ultimate tool to empower our families, bringing those teachings to our homes. As Chico Xavier said in his own experience with the bananas, right? You remember? We just talked about the story that they were devitalized by earthbound spirits to protect our homes and our meals from it. We need to watch and pray. And to learn more about it, how important it is, we have here the segment Got at Home with Naur Fonseca and Gabi Ferreira. Good morning, dear Kardec radio listeners. Welcome to one more program of God at Home. I am Naur Fonseca. And I am Gabi Ferreira. Today's lesson is from the book Jesus in the Home, entitled A Visit from Truth, by the spirit Neo Lucio and psychographed by Chico Xavier. On a certain occasion, the Master said that only the truth would set people free and maybe because he was unable at first to grasp the vast extent of that statement, Peter asked him during the home worship service, Lord, what is truth? An enigmatic look appeared on Jesus' face, and he answered, Complete truth is complete divine light. However, humankind is still far from being able to bear its sublime brightness. But perceiving that the fisherman was eager for further enlightenment, the heavenly friend thought for a few minutes and said, In a dark cave where the daylight never entered, there lived a devout man who prayed for divine assistance. He claimed to be the unhappiest of men. However, in his blindness, he felt he was better off than everyone else. He complained about the stench of the place where he lived. The contaminated air is suffocating me, he cried pitifully. He begged for a door that would set him free and lead him to the light of day. He claimed to be strong, capable, and useful. Why was he stuck here in this painful seclusion? He wept and hollered, laying bare his afflictions and demands. What were the reasons for him being forced to live in that unbearable environment? When our father saw the son making incessant pleas, Amid rebelliousness and bitterness, he was deeply touched and sent faith to him. The sublime virtue exhorted him to trust in the future and to persist in prayer. The wretched man felt somewhat consoled, but in no time at all he went back to his complaining. He wanted to escape from the dung hip, and since his tears increased even more, the Almighty sent hope to him. This emissary wiped his perspiring brow and spoke to him about the eternality of life, trying to dry his desperate tears. For this, he asked for his calmness, resignation, and strength. The poor man appeared to get better, but after a few hours he went back to lamenting. I can't breathe, he claimed in despair. Sympathetic. The Lord decided that charity should pay him a visit. This new messenger caressed and fed him, and spoke kind words to him, as if it were an unselfish mother. Even so, because the miserable man continued his shouting in rebelliousness, the compassionate father sent truth to him. When this bearer of knowledge made itself visible in the form of a great light, the unfortunate man saw himself for what he really was, and he was stricken with dread. 
His body was a monstrous mass of pustulous sores from head to toe, and he realized to his horror that he was in fact the very cause of the unbearable environment in which he lived. The poor man trembled and staggered about, and noting that serene truth had opened the door to his freedom, he was horrified of himself. Without any courage to think about healing himself, rather than looking his visitor straight in the eye, in order to learn how to cleanse and purify himself, he ran off in terror in search of another cave where he could hide the misery that he alone had caused. We can make an analogy between this story and reincarnation and the forgetfulness of the past. The dark cave represents the soul incarnate in a body. The fetid stench is a reminder of all our ill tendencies. All of us can get a glimpse of our past by analyzing our habits. When good, they represent progress accomplished. When bad, a sign of work to be done. Since the children of selfishness and overbearing pride exceed virtue in our society, it's not difficult to conclude that our past is loaded with acts of injustice, violence, and abuses of all sorts. Who could bear such unfiltered truth? Nonetheless, it is important that we do not run off like the man in the story, postponing our progress indefinitely. God sends us faith, hope, charity, and truth via His messengers, and Spiritism is one of them. If you are enrolled in its rosters, keep true to what Kardec said. The true Spiritists can be recognized by their moral transformation and by the efforts they employ in order to dominate their bad instincts. Dear listener, right now we invite you to a final moment of prayer. We always finish Kardec radio shows with a prayer advising people to go to the Gospel According to Spiritism, Chapter 28, A Collection of Spiritist Prayers. Prayers of all different kinds and types so we can get a hold of how many times we need a prayer. Sometimes we don't know what to pray and what to say because our minds are so blurred by so many confusing thoughts and feelings. So here we are, because we're dedicating the show to teaching spiritism to children and youth. Let us pray to all parents and educators, wishing them, vibrating that they really get insights and strength and encouragement to fulfill their mission in the best possible way. Let us raise our thoughts, Open our hearts and feel the blessings that come from God. Dear God, Mother, Father of our lives, thank you. Thank you for providing us with new opportunities, with these great teachings that give meaning to our lives. It reframes our feelings our thoughts. We pray at this moment for all parents and educators on the earth, wishing that they receive great insights on how to teach spirituality to their children, living a life led by good examples. May whatever everyone is on the earth raise their thoughts to you. And know that with you, nothing is impossible. And wherever they are, may they also find the nearest spiritual center or spiritual center or a church or psychological help, educational help, so they can empower their mission in this life, leading our children to God. And so be it. Dear listener, right now, we want to remind you that in a week from today, we have a most special show. It's about John Gray, the best-selling relationship author of all times and the most trusted voice in relationships today. 
John Gray is the best, the author of the best-selling book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Are they really? What does that mean? He's the author of 17 books, including this one. These books have sold more than 50 million copies in more than 50 different languages. Get to know more about John Gray and his amazing work, knowing that his whole family works in his business, and not only that, one of his daughters is actually one of the consultants for youth in regards to relationship in his website, marsvenus.com. He is going to be here with us, and I assure you, he is an adorable heart. And I hope you come, join us, and share the good news because we need to empower our families and our relationships. For now, we wish you many, many blessings. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www. Cardacradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.